بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We have integral x from 0 to pi over 2, x squared, len sine x over cosine x. Our first tool is this series representation for len cosine y. Start with the sum v from 0 to n, e to the i 2 alpha to the power v. This is a finite geometric series that is equal to 1 minus e to the i 2 alpha to the power the number of terms in the sum, which is n plus 1, divided by 1 minus e to the i 2 alpha. We take e to the i alpha as a common factor in the numerator and denominator. This bracket is minus 2i sine alpha. We can write down this quantity as i over 2 e to the minus i alpha minus e to the i alpha 2n plus 1 over sine alpha. Here is the numerator written in terms of the sine and cosine functions. And here it is after multiplying by i. The next step is to take the imaginary part of each side. From here, we get summation v from 0 to n sine 2v alpha. From this part, we get 2 sine alpha in the denominator. In the numerator, we have cosine alpha minus cosine alpha times 2n plus 1. Cosine alpha over 2 sine alpha is 1 half the cotangent of alpha. We integrate this side and that side from y to pi over 2. The antiderivative of sine 2v alpha is minus cosine 2v alpha over 2v. Using the limits of integration, we get cosine 2vy over 2v minus cosine by v over 2v. Cosine by v is minus 1 to the power v. The antiderivative of cot alpha is len sine alpha, which is zero when alpha is equal to pi over two. So from here, we get minus one half len sine y. We also have the integral of this function of alpha, alpha from y to pi over two. Multiply both sides by two. These twos go away. Take the limit as n tends to infinity. Summation v from one to n minus minus one to the v over v is len two. From this side, we get len two plus Summation over positive integer v of cosine 2vy over v. From this side, we get minus len sine y minus the limit of this integral as n tends to infinity. Integrating by parts, we get this term here. y is greater than 0, and this term tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. We also get this integral, which is finite. Sine and cosine are less than or equal to 1 in magnitude. The magnitude of the integrand is less than or equal to the cosecant squared of alpha. This integral is the cotangent of y. A finite number for positive y between 0 and pi over 2, as n tends to infinity, this part also tends to 0. This limit here is equal to 0. We obtain that len sine y is minus len 2 minus summation v from 1 to infinity cosine 2vy over v. Replacing y by pi over 2 minus y, we get that len cosine y is minus len 2 minus summation v from 1 to infinity cosine 2v pi over 2 minus y. This cosine is divided by v. In the numerator, we have cosine 2vy times cosine by v, which is minus 1 to the power v. Len cosine y is equal to minus len 2 minus sum over positive integer v of minus 1 to the v cosine 2vy over v. Another result that we need for our integral is the directly beta function evaluated at 3. One way to obtain it is to do the Fourier series of this periodic function of period 2. On the interval from minus 1 to 1, the periodic function f of x is x times 1 minus x. This is an odd function. The Fourier series only contains the sine functions. We have here sine 2 pi, the positive integer n over the period, which is 2 times x. The coefficient bn is 2 divided by the period, that's 1. And then we integrate over a period x from minus 1 to 1, x times 1 minus x times sine pi nx. The integrand is an even function. We can integrate from 0 and multiply by 2. Integrating by parts twice, we get that bn is 1 minus minus 1 to the n times 4 over pi cubed n cubed. When x is between 0 and 1, the function x times 1 minus x has the series representation. Summation over positive integer n of 4 over pi cubed n cubed, 1 minus minus 1 to the n sine by nx. We can split the sum into the even and odd terms. In the even part, we replace n by 2n. In this case, this bracket is equal to 0. We have another sum where n is replaced by 2n minus 1. In this case, the bracket will be 1 minus minus 1, which is equal to 2. Times 4, we get 8 times 1 minus x is equal to 8 over pi cubed. Summation n from 1 to infinity. Sine by x times 2n minus 1 divided by 2n minus 1 cubed. Set x equal to 1 half. x times 1 minus x is 1 fourth. In the numerator, we get sine pi n minus pi over 2. This is equal minus cosine by n times sine by over 2, which is minus 1 to the n times minus 1. Replace the summation index n by n plus 1. Now we have a sum over non-negative integer n. 
in the numerator, we have minus one to the n. In the denominator, we have two n plus one cubed. This sum is equal to pi cubed divided by 32. The integral x from zero to one, x to the a, ln x to the b, is minus one to the b, gamma of b plus one, divided by a plus one to the power b plus one. We will need this result here, which is valid whenever the real parts of a and b are greater than minus one. In the integral of interest, replace x by y over two minus x. This ratio becomes ln cosine x over sine x. The ratio is now multiplied by the square of y over two minus x. Expanding, we get these three terms. To evaluate the integral x from zero to y over two ln cosine x over sine x, use the change of variables, cosine x equal to t. When x is zero, t is one. When x is y over two, t is zero. Sine x is the square root of one minus t squared. dx is minus dt over the square root of one minus t squared. We can use this minus sign to have the integral t from zero to one. The integrand is ln t divided by one minus t squared. t is from zero to one. We can use the expansion one over one minus t squared is summation over non-negative integer g of t to the two g. We integrate term by term. This is the last integral on the previous page. It is equal to minus gamma of two, which is one divided by two g plus one to the power two. This is the sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the positive odd integers, which is three fourths zeta of two. This integral here is equal to minus pi squared over eight. If we multiply by pi squared over four, we get that this integral is minus pi to the power four divided by 32. Now we focus on the integral x from zero to pi over two, x squared minus pi x, ln cosine x over sine x. We use the series representation of ln cosine x, which is minus ln two minus summation over positive integer v of minus one to the v cosine two vx over v. We get the integral x from zero to pi over two x squared minus pi x over sine x multiplied by minus ln two. We integrate this sum term by term. We have this integral x from zero to pi over two x squared minus pi x cosine two v x over sine x. Note that this integral here is the same as this one if we set v equal to zero. So let's focus on this integral here. Call it omega of v. This integral is minus ln two times omega of zero minus summation v from one to infinity minus one to the v over v omega of v. What is omega of v plus one minus omega of v? In the integrand, we get cosine x times 2v plus 2 minus cosine x times 2v. This difference can be written as minus 2 times two sine functions. The argument of the first sine function is 2vx plus 2x plus 2vx divided by 2. This is 2v plus 1x. The argument of the second sine function is 2vx plus 2x minus 2vx divided by 2. This is sine x. It goes away with the sine x in the denominator. We get this integral here. Integrating by parts twice, this integral times minus two is four over the cube of two v plus one. Omega one minus omega zero is equal to four. Omega two minus omega one is equal to four over three cubed. Omega three minus omega two is four over five cubed. Generally, omega v minus omega zero is four times summation L from zero to v minus one, one over two L plus one cubed. We can put this result here. We can take omega zero outside the sum. This summation with the minus sign is ln two. So this is ln two omega zero minus ln two omega zero, that's zero. What is left is minus four, summation v from one to infinity, minus one to the v over v. Then this sum here, the sum of interest is minus pi to the four over 32. Then this part, the integral x from zero to one, x to l ln x squared is equal to minus one squared, which is one, gamma of three, which is two, divided by 2L plus one to the power three. This summation here can be expressed as, as the sum over these integrals indexed by L divided by two. Interchanging the order of summation and integration, we have the sum L from zero to V minus one X to the two L, which is one minus X to the two V over one minus X squared. If we apply this sum with respect to V to this one, we get minus ln two. When the sum is applied to X to the two V, we get ln one plus X squared. We are done once we evaluate the integral x from zero to one, ln x squared, ln one plus x squared over two, all over one minus x squared. This is integral x from zero to one, ln one plus x squared over two, d integral y from zero to x, ln y squared over one minus y squared. We integrate by parts. 
the product of these two functions of x is equal to zero when x is equal to zero. Also, the product is equal to zero when x is equal to one. As we get a finite integral times ln one plus one over two, that's ln one, which is zero. We also have minus integral x from zero to one, the derivative of this function of x, which is two x over one plus x squared. This ratio is multiplied by integral y from zero to x, ln y squared over one minus y squared. Do the substitution, y equal to tx, when y is 0, t is 0. When y is x, t is 1. We can do partial fractions. x squared, 1 plus t squared, over 1 plus x squared, 1 minus t squared, x squared, is equal to 1 over 1 minus t squared, x squared, minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. This 2 is here. Minus 1 times this difference gives 1 over 1 plus x squared, minus 1 over 1 minus t squared, x squared. Split this into two integrals. The integral with this part is here. For the other integral, expand this square, we have ln t plus ln x all squared. So we have ln t squared plus ln x squared plus 2 ln t ln x. In the denominator, we have 1 plus t squared times 1 plus x squared. Both t and x are from 0 to 1. We get the same value if in the numerator we have ln t squared or ln x squared. We can just have the double integral with ln x squared in the numerator. We change this 2 into 4. We also have 4 integral x from 0 to 1, integral t from 0 to 1 ln t, ln x over 1 plus t squared, 1 plus x squared. This is four times the square of the integral x from 0 to 1, ln x over 1 plus x squared. To evaluate this integral, we write 1 over 1 plus x squared as summation g from 0 to infinity, minus x squared all to the power g. We integrate term by term. This integral is equal to the ratio minus 1 over 2g plus 1 squared. This quantity is minus between brackets 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared and so on. This integral is equal to minus Catalan's constant denoted here by g. In a similar fashion, we can do the integration here with respect to x. The difference is that we have ln x squared. So this integral is a ratio. In the numerator, we have gamma of 2, which is 2. In the denominator, we have 2g plus 1 cubed. This summation is directly data of 3 derived on the previous page as pi cubed over 32. So this integral is pi cubed over 16. The integral here with respect to t is the inverse tangent of t. We get pi over 4 when we use the limits of integration. This double integral is pi over 4 times pi cubed over 16, which is pi to the 4 over 64. To obtain this integral, interchange the order of integration, change x to u using u equal to tx. When x is 0, u is 0. When x is 1, u is t dx is du over t. The integrand becomes ln u squared over 1 plus t squared times 1 minus u squared. 2 over t times 1 plus t squared is equal to 2 over t minus 2t over 1 plus t squared. The antiderivative is 2 ln t minus ln 1 plus t squared. We integrate by parts. When t is equal to 1, we have minus ln 2 times integral u from 0 to 1 ln u squared over 1 minus u squared. If t tends to 0 from above, the integral tends to 0, but ln t tends to minus infinity. We can rewrite the product as the integral divided by 1 over ln t, applying L'Hopital's rule. This limit is equal to the limit as t tends to 0 from above of ln t squared over 1 minus t squared, all over minus 1 over the square of ln t times 1 over t. When t tends to 0, this tends to 1. So we have minus ln t to the power 4 divided by 1 over t. This is an infinity over infinity situation. So we apply L'Hopital's rule a couple of times and conclude that the limit is zero. We also have minus the integral of this function of t times the derivative of this function with respect to t, which is ln t squared over 1 minus t squared. From this part, we get ln 2 times the integral t from 0 to 1 ln t squared over 1 minus t squared, which cancels what we get from here when t is set to 1. The surviving terms are minus 2 ln t cubed over 1 minus t squared. We also have the integral ln t squared ln 1 plus t squared over 2 all over 1 minus t squared. We need to multiply this result by minus 1. This integral is 4g squared plus pi to the 4 over 16 plus 2 integral t from 0 to 1 ln t cubed over 1 minus t squared minus this integral which is exactly the same as what we have on the left hand side. So we can move this to the left hand side and divide these terms by 2 to get 2g squared plus pi to the power 4 over 32 plus integral t from 0 to 1 ln t cubed over 1 minus t squared. 
We write 1 over 1 minus t squared as summation g from 0 to infinity t to the 2g. We integrate term by term. This integral is minus 1 to the 3. That's minus 1. Gamma of 4, which is 3 factorial, or 6. Downstairs, we have 2g plus 1 to the power 4. This is the sum of the reciprocals of the fourth powers of the positive odd integers. That's zeta of 4 times 15 over 16. This integral is minus 45 over 8, zeta of 4. Zeta of 4 is pi to the 4 over 90. The integral of interest is minus pi to the 4 over 32, minus 2 times this sum, which is equal to 2g squared minus pi to the 4 over 32. The integral x from 0 to pi over 2, x squared ln sine x over cosine x, is pi to the 4 over 32, minus 4 times the square of Catalan's constant.